Hey everyone, this is John Lee and thanks for tuning in. In this video, we are going to import 2D artwork into Blender to set up a 3D scene. Here's the final image that we will be creating. We'll be covering the basics of nodes, UV maps, adding text, and working with the free Blender Lens Flare add-on, Flare Wizard. Project files and links are available in the description below. This video is for beginners. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and let's get started. Okay, we're using Blender version 2.79, and when you first launch Blender, it starts off with this default scene that contains three basic elements, a camera, a 3D object, which is this cube, and a light source. The first thing we're going to do is select our render engine. So if we navigate to the top of our screen here, you'll see where it says Blender Render. Click on that and select Cycles Render. A render engine is the type of lighting that you want for your scene. Think of it as a lighting engine. So Blender defaults to the Blender Render Engine which is great for non-photorealistic lighting. If you want to do something like cell shading, you might choose the Blender Render Engine. The Blender Render Engine is also extremely fast. This project, though, we're going to be using the Cycles Render Engine, which is great for photorealistic lighting and most closely mimics how lighting behaves in real life. It's also extremely slow but it looks great. And so that's why we're going to be using it for this project. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this cube and replace it with another 3D object. So select your 3D cube, hit delete on your keyboard, then press enter to delete the cube. And to add in a new 3D object, press shift A on your keyboard and under the mesh menu option, you'll have access to all these other different 3D objects. We're going to select plane and immediately adds the plane to the scene. This plane is lying face down on the floor. I want the plane to be standing upright, so we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis by using keyboard shortcuts. So with the plane selected, press R on your keyboard for rotate, then press X on your keyboard to rotate it on the x-axis. And if you notice in the viewport, this red line is now appearing, which represents the x-axis. And now we want to rotate our plane 90 degrees along the x-axis. And we do that by typing 90 on our keyboard, which rotates at 90 degrees. And then we press Enter to finalize those settings. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the front view of our scene. And we can do that by clicking on the middle mouse button and drag in but I prefer to use a keyboard shortcut. So if you press one on the numpad of our keyboard, it immediately takes you to the front view of our scene. And I'm going to zoom in by scrolling on my mouse wheel to get a closer view of our plane. And now we're ready for the next step, which is we are going to paste a 2D image onto our 3D object. And in order to do that, um, well, let me just explain why we're going to do that. We're going to paste a bunch of 2D images on these on various planes that we add into our scene. And we're going to arrange those planes into a basic 3D scene or environment and give it some basic lighting, lens flares, and, and some other 3D elements. But the first step is we need to add a 2D image onto a 3D object, the plane in this case. And in order to do that, you need four basic things. The first thing you need is the 2D image, obviously. So one of the images that we'll be using is something like this, a PNG image with a transparent background. We'll paste that onto our 3D object, this plane, which is the second thing you need. You need a 3D object to paste your 2D image onto. And then the third thing that you need is you need to tell Blender what type of surface this 3D object has. In other words, is this surface shiny? 
Is it a dull matte surface? Does it glow? Is it transparent? You need to select one of those, at least one of those characteristics, and apply it to this 3D object. Uh, and we do that by using a shader, which we will get into uh, momentarily. And the fourth and final thing that you need, uh, or rather Blender needs, is we need to tell Blender where to position the image on this 3D object. So is the image in the center? Is it in the upper right? Or I'm sorry. Is it in the lower right corner? Um, do we only want to show a part of the image on this 3D object? We need to specifically tell Blender where the image is positioned on the 3D object, and we do that by using a 2D map called a UV map. And we'll get into that briefly uh, later in the video. So those are the four basic things that you need. Again, you need the 2D image, the 3D object, you need a surface type, using a shader node, and you need to tell Blender where to position the image on the 3D object using a UV map. So next, we're going to, uh, and, and, and also, in order to do any of those things, you need to assign a material to your 3D object. So to that end, let's add in a new window to our project and we do that by clicking on this triangle tab in the upper right corner of our window left click on it with your mouse and drag to the left and you'll see it creates this new window identical to the previous window but now I'm going to go over to the lower left icon the bottom corner and click on that and you'll see it gives you all these other different menu options and what these other menu options are Basically, they are other apps within Blender that you can access. Blender is kind of a mix of different programs combined together to form one gigantic program, sort of like Power Rangers. So if we look briefly, you'll see that there's a 2D image editor, which is kind of like the MS Paint of Blender. There's a video editor. There's a uh, text editor. Um, we want to access the node editor. So let's click on that. And as you can see, it immediately takes us to this empty workspace. There aren't any nodes on it yet, um, but we'll address that right now. With your 3D object selected, head on over to the right, which are the global properties of our project, and select this materials icon all the way on the right, and then click on the new button. And right away, it places the, our first two nodes of the project. Now, before we get um, go any further, I want to explain what nodes are. Nodes are kind of similar to working with layers in Photoshop. However, layers can only be moved above or below each other, whereas nodes can be moved left, right, up, down, anywhere you want on the workspace. When you open an image in Photoshop, it gets placed on a layer and immediately appears on the canvas. In contrast, when you open a 2D image in Blender, you have to open it using a node, which gets placed on the workspace, or the node gets placed on the workspace, and then you have to connect that node to several other nodes before it gets, um, before it'll appear on the surface of our 3D object. So it takes more steps, but that's the nature of working with 3D versus 2D. So um, let's take a look at the two nodes that we have here on our workspace. The first node is a shader node, which describes the type of surface on our 3D object. And in this instance, Blender defaulted to the diffuse BSDF. That's the technical term for the shader. But what this surface type really is, is a Think of it as a flat, um, matte type surface. I guess, you know, the type of surface you might see on a feel on a piece of paper or something like that. And it assigned it a, a default color of white. This node is then connected to this material output node. And I guess one way to think of this node is um, it displays our 
final image onto the surface of our 3D object. So think of it as a display node. You need a display node before the image will appear on our 3D object. So now let's see what adding a 2D image uh, or importing a 2D image using nodes looks like. So what we need to do is add a 2D image node by make sure your cursor is hovering in the um, node editor and press shift A on your keyboard and then navigate down to the texture menu option and then choose image texture. And here's our image texture node. Click on the open button navigate to whichever image you want to bring in Let's see I have my folder here and then up here you can choose the view thumbnail option and the first one I'm gonna bring in is this image now we've imported the image but notice it hasn't appeared on the 3d object yet because as I mentioned earlier we need four things we need the 2d image which we now have we need the 3D object, which we also have, but we also need uh, we need a surface. Um, we need to describe. We need to tell Blender what type of surface we're using, and we have that as well with this surface shader. So I'm going to connect that. I'm going to connect our image to the surface, and the surface type is in turn connected to our display node. But the image still hasn't appeared on our 3D object yet, um, and that's because we're missing one final step and that is we need to tell Blender where the 2D image should be placed on our 3D object. If you're missing any one of those four elements your image will not appear on the on the 3D object so make sure you have those four elements down. Now we're going to add this image using a um, UV map um, but before we do that, let me just change the display mode in this other window here. So in the 3D viewport window, change the view mode from solid mode, which is where we currently are, to material mode. And right now, and right away, you can see that our 3D object turned black. And black is Blender's way of telling you that it doesn't know what to show on the surface of its 3D object. Think of it as like sort of an error message. And that's because we are missing the UV map. Um, also, I just want to touch on why there are these different display modes. You have uh, rendered mode, you have material, texture, solid, wireframe, and bounding box. Blender has all these different ways to view your project because if you have a really complicated scene um, it can get really laggy. Like if you're trying to navigate around your scene, it'll be really choppy, very slow. Um, so Blender compensates for that by giving you different um, ways to view your scene. Um, and they make it, you can make it either very, very simple by, by going into wireframe mode, which doesn't um, make your computer work that hard, to going to full rendered mode with all the bells and whistles, with all the effects showing, which can really slow down your project. So that's why they give you the option to switch between different um, levels of uh, visibility. Rendered being the most complicated, um, it's all the bells and whistles, and bounding box being the uh, least complicated. All right, so um, now we're again in material view mode and in order to have our 2d image show up on this 3d object we need to UV create a UV map so the way you do that is we want to go from object mode here to edit mode object mode allows you to move your object in space you know on X Y Z or ac axis you can rotate it uh, and do basic um, editing in object mode. But edit mode allows you to actually fundamentally change the shape of your objects. Like you can turn the square into a star or something like that. Uh, so that's kind of the difference between those two modes. But we're going to go into edit mode 
because that's the mode we need to go to in order to create a UV map. So with your object selected, uh, and if you, if you don't have it selected, it'll look like this. Press A to select your object. It'll select everything. And you'll see it's highlighted in orange. That means it's selected. And then press U on your keyboard. It'll open up this menu and just choose Unwrap. And right away, you can see our 2D image is on our the surface of our 3D object, but it might not be placed exactly the way we want it. And so to fix that, we need to navigate to another app within Blender. We need to a navigate to the 2D image editor. So I'm going to create a new window by clicking on that triangle tab in the upper right corner and dragging down. And then we're going to go to navigate to the 2D image app, which is called the UV slash image editor. And now we're going to select our image that we just brought in. There we go. Now it may not, um, so, so this is our UV map here in the image editor. We want to move it around a little bit. So press G to move, to grab, and then move your mouse button around to move the UV map. UV map is actually a, um, the, the, word, the reason why they use UV instead of XY is because long ago, I think when they were developing 3D software, the letters X and Y were already taken, so they had to use the letters U and V uh, instead of X and Y to um, name this 2D map. So that's why it's called a UV map instead of an XY map. But this is essentially a 2D map, and you can move it anywhere around, and notice that it changes the position of our image on the 3D surface of our object. Now I've positioned it roughly uh, in the center. Now I want to scale this object down. So with the UV map selected, press S to scale, and then move your mouse to scale it down. There we go. And there. I think that's roughly a good place to put the UV map. All right. Now we're going to go back to edit mode. Also, if you want to select and deselect your um, UV map, hit A. A deselects everything. A again reselects everything. Alternatively, you can deselect and left click with your, or I'm sorry, right click with your mouse button to select individual points of your UV map. You can even move them around. You can see how it uh, deforms the um, image on our 3D object on the left. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to control Z to undo that. And we're going to go back to object mode. Now, the image has these black borders around it. And we want to get rid of that. And the way we do that is we assign, we're going to make anything that's black become transparent. And we have to do that with nodes. So when we go back to our node editor, OK, this is a little tricky. So let me see how I'm going to explain this. The 2D image that we imported has a transparent background. Web browsers and programs like Photoshop know which parts of an image are visible and which parts are invisible thanks to this thing called an alpha channel. And the alpha channel is just a black and white image. Here's what it looks like. So let's zoom in to our image texture node. And you'll notice there are two sockets here, one that is labeled color the bottom one is labeled alpha. If we disconnect our color socket, the color socket is our artwork. It's our color artwork. The alpha socket is our alpha channel, which again, is just a black and white image. So let's disconnect our color socket uh, and connect our alpha channel to see our black and white alpha image. And as you can see, 
it's showing on our 3D object over here on the left. You can see the, the white part here, and then around the border is it's black. <clears throat> if we combine this alpha image with our actual artwork, this determines the visibility of the final image. Artwork that overlaps the black parts of the alpha channel image become invisible. It's like wearing the cloak of invisibility. And art that overlaps the white part of the alpha channel image will be visible. Photoshop and web browsers automatically make those changes for us when we bring an image into those programs, like a PNG image with an alpha channel. In Blender, however, we have to manually tell Blender that black means invisible and white means visible. And here's how we do it. First, let me reconnect the um, image texture back to the way it originally was. And uh, next, we're, we're going to add a new shader node called the Mix Shader. This node merges two other nodes together, kind of like merging two layers in Photoshop. So in your node editor, press Shift A. And under the Shader menu option, head on over and select the Mix Shader. Next, we're going to connect our um, our black and white image, which is contained in this alpha socket, to our mix node, to this gray socket at the top of the mix node. Right. Trying to make this as clear as possible. Now let me just make a little more space for myself here. And so now the uh, black and white image is plugged in at this gray socket at the top of the mix shader. Um, and what that means is that now any image that's connected into um, or any image or surface type rather that's connected to the top green socket will replace the black part of our alpha image and any image or surface type that's connected into the bottom green socket will replace the white parts of the alpha image. We want our artwork to appear in the white part, so we're going to connect it into this bottom green socket. And, uh, okay, so let's do that. I'm going to disconnect this diffuse shader, which is connected to our artwork, and plug it into this bottom shader. And you'll see our 3D object immediately to turn black because Blender is saying, error, error, I don't have enough information. So let's connect our mix shader back to where uh, the other shader was plugged into, this surface socket of the uh, display shader or material output node. And so now our artwork appears wherever the um, alpha image was white. It replaced the white with our image, our artwork. Now we want to replace the black with another um, node. And we're going to use a transparent surface type node. We're just gonna, and we're going to add that by pressing Shift A. And under Shader, you're going to see Transparent BSDF. And so if we plug the transparent surface type into this top green socket of the mix shader, that means it's going to replace all the black parts of our alpha image with an invisible surface. And voila, oops, wait, it's white. Oh, the reason why it uh, didn't turn invisible is because, as I mentioned earlier, Blender has all these different display types here at the bottom, view types. Um, if we go to rendered mode, we'll see that it's invisible. The lighting is not so good. But I'm going to go back to material view mode. And Blender disables transparencies in material view mode by default. So you have to enable view transparencies. Uh, and you do that by going over here, make sure um, the material icon is selected, and head over down to settings, and then head over down to viewport alpha. 
and choose alpha clip and that turns on the alpha for your scene now you can see them visible all right and that's pretty much the hardest part of this tutorial <laughs> if you understood what was going on here congratulations okay now for the easy part we're going to assemble our scene so let me just make this window a little bit larger what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this plane uh, a couple of times so make sure your plane is selected press shift D to duplicate it and then press R to rotate along the uh, um, we're going to rotate it along the uh, Z axis, I think. Z, there it is highlighted. Um, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees, like so. And we'll hit Enter. And now we're going to move this by clicking on the red arrow. moves it along the x-axis then we're going to click on the green arrow if you can see it which will move it along the y-axis just want to scroll around a little bit to make sure those edges are lining up okay like so that's good enough okay and then again, we're going to make sure that this side wall is selected. Press, press Shift D again, and then press X to translate it along the X axis. I'm just going to move it across to the other side. And then press your left mouse button to let it go. I think that's aligned pretty well. And then um, last but not least, we're going to add a floor. So shift D again. We're going to rotate it by pressing R. Press X to rotate it on the uh, X axis. And, choose, and type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. And so this will become our floor. I'm just going to click on that blue arrow and drag it down. I'm going to move it across and uh, I'm going to rotate it again. Hit R to rotate. We're going to rotate around the Z axis and I think it should be rotated one or maybe 90 degrees. Wait, wait, let me undo that. Um, R to rotate along the Z axis 90 degrees. Is that right? Yeah, I guess it's right. Why is it so... Oh, okay, it's not high enough. Let's align that with the bottom edges of each of those three walls that we just made. There we go. Okay, I was wondering. Okay, now we're going to replace the um, image textures, uh, the images for these other uh, planes that we just created. So select one wall, go over to your node editor, and choose um, the image that you want to attach. So we're going to go with uh, wall number two here. Oh, look at that. Um, oh, I forgot to mention. All right, so let's undo that. Control Z. I forgot to mention every any time you duplicate in an image or a, an object here, it creates a new it creates an instance of the original object. The object is, is not is not its own independent person, so to speak. So, anytime I make a change to the image in one instance, it'll change the image in all of the instances. So to make them each a separate instance. 
first select the um, in uh, the uh, instance that you want to change and head over to this material tab and you'll notice that there's a number four here Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for this particular material that means there are four instances of this material if we click on the four this plane now is its own has its own separate material and so now when we attach a material in the node editor let's just attach another image wall number two and now it updates with that image without affecting the other instances and we repeat the process for these other two um, instances that we the other instances that we created so again select the instance that you want to update now there's only three instances but if we click on that it's now its own independent instance and now we can attach a separate image on there the third wall and then finally I'm going to click on this floor and now there's only two instances you have to click on that two to get rid of it now it's its own independent person and you replace that plain image with whatever you want to put in there so here floor there we go and I just noticed that this image is reversed so I'm gonna rotate this wall hit R to rotate and I'm gonna type in one oh, I'm sorry Let's just undo that R to rotate along the Z axis 180 degrees and that completely flips it around properly there we go there we go okay I think I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna rotate R and press Z to rotate around the Z axis and then type in 180 there is that right why does that look off and do that rotate Z axis 180 Rotate x axis 180. No, it's reverse. So rotate z axis 180. Rotate y axis. Oh, forget. Rotate y, uh, rotate y axis one eighty. Rotate z axis one eighty. Okay, yeah, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so we're gonna leave this as is. Um, next we're going to. Oh, we got to add our character in here. Um, let's duplicate another instance of this wall and then shift it along the y-axis drag your mouse whoops y-axis left mouse click to place it and I'm going to again create a step make sure that this is no longer an instance make it its own independent material now I'm going to replace this material, or replace this image with my character. Make it, whoa, it's too big. Let me scale this down, so with that object selected, hit, press S on your keyboard, drag your mouse down to scale it to an appropriate size. Um, and I got to play around with the um, UV map because it's clipping some of this artwork. So let's go back to edit mode. And let's enlarge our UV image editor and find the character we just brought in. There we go. We'll select it. And so I'm going to 
hit A to select all, G to grab, and then move my mouse around to place it in position. And then I'm going to hit S to scale this the UV map a little bit larger so it's not clipping the artwork. And there we go. That's good. Okay. So now we're going to go back to object mode. And let's see, we'll place this character a little in the scene. Make sure it's aligned with the floor. Let's see. Now, if you want to align things, it's um, good to hit 5 on your numpad, which removes perspective and looks at everything without perspective. So you can line things up a little easier. Now make sure I'm looking at front view. Bring this down a little bit. I'm going to scale this out. Bring it up. And now it's aligned with the floor. Scale it a little bit. And then bring it down a little. Okay, I'm just positioning things in space. That's all. I mean, you don't have to spend this much time doing what I'm doing. Uh, okay, so you hit 5 again to get out of orthographic view, to get back into perspective view. And there we are. Now I think I want to align the camera and play with the camera settings. So the viewport view that we have right now, this is not the actual um, angle or view that will actually be rendered. What will actually be rendered is what the camera is actually seeing. And if you remember, our camera is all the way out here. So if you want to see what the camera is seeing, press zero on your numpad and it automatically shows what the camera is seeing and that's what would be rendered when you hit um, F12. That's not what we want so what I'm going to do is navigate with my middle mouse button the scroll wheel to zoom in. I'm going to um, select this character and then press zero to um, get my viewport to focus on that particular object and then align my viewport in a view that I think looks somewhat appealing and then once you get the view or angle that you want press control alt numpad zero on your keyboard and what that will do is place your camera exactly at the view that you're at there we go um, right, so the camera is actually only focusing on a small area as indicated by this bounding box. So what we want to do is, um, if you were to move your mouse, it goes out of the camera view and back into viewport mode, and that's not what we want. We want to go back to camera view by pressing zero, and we want to be able to change the view of our camera using our mouse. So what you need to do is, let me just go back. You're going to see this little plus sign on the right side of your screen. Just click on that. Um, alternatively, you can press the N key to open this. The, this is the local properties for the particular app that you're in. We're in the 3D view app, but if I were to click here, this would be the local properties for our 2D drawing app. This would be the local properties for our node app. These are the local properties for the 3D viewport. So what I'm going to do is there's an option here that says lock camera to view. If you click on that, what that does is you can now use your middle mouse button and um, scroll in and out, and that will alter the camera viewpoint without going out of the camera viewpoint into viewport mode. So there we go. I think what I want to do let me see if I can just make this window a little larger so it's easier to see on screen. And uh, if I hit control, middle mouse button, and drag, you can zoom in and out slowly. If I hold shift and middle mouse button and drag, you can move, you can pan. So 
just trying to position it in a nice pleasing arrangement. Um, the other thing I like to do is play with the camera settings. So here at the top on the right side, this is your this basically contains a list of every single object in your scene. And this is an easy way to access certain, I guess, objects. If you have too many objects in your 3D viewport, you may not be able to find something. So you want to go over here to the um, list of all the objects in your scene. So I'm going to select camera. And then click on the camera button icon, and that'll open up the camera settings. And let's see. One thing, the first thing I like to do is change the lens or sensor size. The larger the size, the more distorted the perspective becomes. And I like distorted perspective. I just sort of like the way it looks. So here's what it looks like. Right now it's set to 32. If we change that to 60, you get more distortion in the perspective. If you change that to 100, you get even more distortion in the perspective. That's a little too much. I'm going to change that to, let's try 80. OK. I think that's what I did before. So I'm going to zoom in. And you can see the perspective is a little more exaggerated. That just sort of makes me feel like I'm more in the scene. If you flatten out the perspective, it doesn't really make me feel like I'm actually there. I don't know why. It just Aesthetically, I just think it looks more pleasing. So that's what I'm going to do. Just playing around with the angle a little bit. Again, make sure you have lock camera to view checked. Because what your camera is seeing here is what will be rendered, not what you're seeing in the viewport. So let's do that. Zoom in a little. Control, middle mouse button to zoom. Shift mouse middle mouse button to pan. I'm gonna middle mouse button to rotate a little. Shift middle mouse button pan again. I think I'm gonna move this character a little to the left because I want to add some text to the right side of this scene. It also adds some lens flares. character forward. I'm just playing with the elements in the scene to try to get a pretty image. Bring that forward a little. That's too close. I'm holding control and middle mouse button to zoom in. Ah, good enough. Okay. So um, now I'm ready to uncheck lock camera to view because I just want to look at this from the viewport. Um, and now what we're going to do is add more objects to our scene. And to control where newly added objects appear, we have to position the 3D cursor, which is this um, little, you'll see this little circle. I know it's kind of hard. It's this dashed red and white circle with a target around it. That's our 3D cursor, and the 3D cursor functions like the cursor in a word processing program like Microsoft Word. When you type in new text, it appears wherever the cursor is placed. Same idea with Blender. The 3D cursor, wherever that 3D cursor is, anytime you add a new object, it'll appear where the 3D cursor is. So I want to place the cursor, the 3D cursor, where the character, our character, our female character is. So to do that, I'm going to hit Shift press shift s and there is an option to um, cursor to selected so make sure you have your object selected and then press shift s cursor to selected it immediately moves the cursor where the selected object is and now I'm going to add uh, text to add text again we add text just like we do any other 3D object. We hit Shift-A. Wait a minute. 
kind of shift A and then there is a text menu option you click on that and automatically it adds text to our scene but guess what the text is lying flat on the floor just like our original plane was when we first started so we want to rotate this text and have it face the camera um, so first well first let's change the text um, go over to the text or the uh, font icon click on that and we're going to change our font by scrolling down um, under this font menu settings we're going to open up a font and my fonts are saved for Windows computers I know fonts are in, in the C drive the Windows directory in the fonts folder I don't know where is in the, where those fonts are on Mac but just do a search online you should be able to find it pretty easily um, and the font that I'm going to be using is called let's take a look retro stereo wide this is a free font available on defont.com so the website I found it on is www.defont.com backslash retro dash stereo dash wide dot font I'll post a link in the description of the video but just go to defont.com and type in retro stereo wide you should be able to find it pretty easily okay so now with the text with the text selected we're going to go into edit mode and then backspace to delete the text and then type in my own text in case I'm typing glow and then go out of edit mode back to object mode now I'm going to rotate this text rotate it along the x-axis 90 degrees so now it's standing upwards but the text is aligned with the um, back wall I, and the camera if you notice is actually at an off angle from the rest of the scene and I want the text to be aligned with the camera not with the rest of the scene so to do that um, first I'm going to just let me just scale the size down on this text make sure you select it press S to scale oops wrong object selected text S to scale scale it down in fact it's probably better if I look at this from the camera viewport there we go and the other thing I want to do is assign a material to the text so let me just expand the material options here click on the material button in your properties panel hit new and that assigns a material to our text I want the text to be a certain color it automatically assigns a off-white color instead of full white I'm not sure I know there's a good reason why it assigns it an off-white color instead of full white but I don't remember right now offhand why they do that but just go ahead and make sure the color setting is full white and now to align our text with the camera select the text oops select the text you can tell it's selected because there should be an orange highlight around that object and then hold down shift and select your camera that selects both objects at the same time and make sure you select it in that order select the text first shift and then select the camera first and the reason why you do that is because it makes even though both of these objects are selected the camera the last selected object which is the camera in this case is the active selected object and what that means is the camera's properties will appear in the properties window instead of the text properties so I want to align the text with the camera as I mentioned so we're going to take the camera's rotation values and right click and say copy all to selected and what that does is it'll copy the rotation values from the camera to the text and there you see that the text is now aligned with the camera so now I'll go back to the camera view just try to position this text in a way that um, 
looks, oops, shoot, control Z to undo that. Now you want to unselect both the camera and the text. So hit A to deselect all, then click on the text to select it. I'm going to lift it up and just try to find a pleasing composition. Now, right now, the um, this translation widget, the X, Y, and Z axis, is aligned with the world axis. And I want it to align with the local axis of the text. And to do that, we're going to go down here where it says global and change it to local. And you'll notice that the widget updated. So now, when I um, click on one of those widgets, it'll move locally with respect to the position of the text or the object. Right, and just position this a little bit so that it's all right. Ugh. Zero. Uh, let me decrease the size of this text object, S to scale, bring it down a little, move it over, scale it a little, Ugh. hang on, let me lock camera to view, and uh, let's just change the view of the camera, see if I can get a better look at this. Again, playing around with camera angles. You're going to be fiddling around with camera angles a lot when you work with uh, 3D software. And eventually you become proficient with manipulating objects and viewpoints. Okay, scale. It's being clipped by that sidewall, which I don't like. Let me scale it down a little. There we go. All right, so because I'm adjusting the camera angle again, I'm going to have to realign the text to match the same angle as the camera. So again, let's get out of this lock camera to view mode, go back to viewport, select our text, select our camera in that order, and then right click on the uh, rotation settings to paste the rotation settings to our, from the camera to the text. There we go. Let's go back. All right. Let's see if I can scale. Okay. Deselect everything by hit pressing A. Reselect your text by right clicking and see if I can just make this a little bit larger without clipping into the wall, but I can't. So I'm just going to leave it there. And the reason why I'm not um, moving the text closer to the camera is because eventually I'm going to set a focal point. Um, on the character in our scene and I want the text to also be in focus and there'll be a depth of field blur applied to the rest of the scene so you want to keep if, if you want to keep things in focus you want to align with the thing that you want to you want to align all objects with the thing that's going to be eventually be in focus I hope that made sense okay so with that out of the way let's hmm. well, let me zoom in a little bit it's key. Oh. Lock camera to view. Zoom in a little change. That's okay. Okay. Let's see what the rendered view. Let's uncheck the lock camera to view because now I'm going to place lights. But first, let's see what the scene looks like with the current light setup. So we're going to change our viewport mode from material to the um, rendered viewport mode, which turns on all of the special effects, all the lights, everything. It makes your computer work pretty hard. And you can see the scene is pretty dark, which um, we don't want. So let's go back. Actually, what I'm going to do is Let's open up 
another 3D view scene. Change the viewport view to material. So this viewport on the left is in rendered view mode and this viewport on the right is in material view mode. And material view mode makes it easier to manipulate objects. So I'm going to click on this light source move it around a little bit and here's where the shortcut keys become handy on the numpad press 3 to look at things from the top view and get rid of perspective by pressing 5 to go into orthographic view we're going to move this down a little bit to the left and let's go back to front view and you can see it's already lighting up the scene on the in the rendered view on the left. It's a little too bright, and so with the with the light source selected, click on the um, light source icon, which looks like that, and then press the Use Nodes button, and that'll allow you to change the strength. I'm going to change this down to 10, maybe? Let's see. OK, 10. You can see it's updating the light effects in the rendered view. I'm just going to place this light slightly in front of our character to light our character. Might be a little too bright. Just positioning this light. Just have to eyeball it. See what looks good for you. Okay, I think that's okay. Now I'm going to add a um, another light. And to do that, we're going to type in. Um, just keep in mind where your 3D cursor is. Remember, it's the same position as our character but if you've lost track of your 3d cursor just click on an object and then make sure it's selected then type press shift s and cursor to select it right there now I'm going to type in shift a to add an object and we're going to choose lamp point light and it adds a point light exactly where our character is um, so that point light is too bright so again we're going to click on the light icon that accesses the light settings and yeah, make sure your light is selected there I think there and change the strength down to say 5 uh, maybe 10. Okay. So there's our light. I'm going to move it around a little bit and place it closer to the ground to kind of create a spotlight effect on the floor. Uh, maybe that's a little too much. too close to the floor. I just wanted to be a little bit more subtle. Raise that light up a little bit more. Okay, so I think that's looking a little better. Seen as a little better lit. Okay, the other thing I want to do is um, change the surface of the text again. click on it. Ah, let's get out of render view. So click on the text and you'll notice we assigned a material to it and it assigned the diffuse BSDF material. That's the default um, material that Blender uses when you add, whenever you create a new, add a new material to an object. Um, and if you remember the diffuse BSDF is a sort of flat matte 
surface type. It's similar to what you might feel on a piece of paper. So let's delete that and add in a, another type of shader. Um, you select that node and then you hit delete on your keyboard. Now we're going to hit Shift A to add a new node. And we're going to go over to Shader. And I'm going to choose the Emission Shader. And the Emission Shader is basically a glow node. It adds a glow to our text. And then if we go into the Material Settings over here on the right, I have the Glow Strength set to 1. I don't know if that was there by, if that's what it is by default, but if it isn't, if the strength of your glow of your mission isn't 1, just change it to 1. Because we just want a slight glow, we don't want it too strong. Let me just go back to rendered mode to see how this looks. There we go, so now the text stands out. Okay, let's go back to material mode. One more thing with the text, I need to change the color of the text from off-white to full-white. I keep forgetting that Blender assigns slightly less than white by default. So now we get a full-white color on our text. Now the final touch that we're going to add is lens flares. We're almost done, guys. So lens flares aren't natively built into Blender. Um, but luckily, there is an add-on, a free add-on, online, available, called Flares Wizard. And let me see. We'll, let's go to the website. There it is. It's located at codeofart.com backslash flares-wizard. And I'll post a link in the video description below. But basically, when you get there, just scroll down hit the download button. There's a paid version and there's a free version. Make sure you're downloading the free version. Um, so click download, save the zip file anywhere uh, in your directory. And once you've done that, go back to Blender. And now we're going to import this add-on by going to File, go to User Preferences, and this the User Preferences window should open up. You want to go over to File, the File tab, click on Auto Run Python Scripts, then go to Add-ons, and type Install Add-on from File, navigate to the folder where the, you saved the Flares, dash, Flares Wizard uh, zip file, click on it, and that adds the add-on to your list of add-ons but you need to activate it. So in the search bar here on the upper left of our user preferences window, type in flare and it should come up. And what you want to do is check mark the box there and that's it. Now when you exit out of the user preferences window, you'll notice that lens flare, a lens flares tab appears on the left side here. If you click on it, you'll get into the uh, preferences for lens flares. And the way lens flares works is you have to attach it to an object. So we're going to attach it to some more lights. So let's make sure that our 3D cursor is positioned. Um, let's see, I'm going to make sure it's positioned where our, gl where our text is. Yeah, I'll make sure it's positioned where our uh, character is. Shift S, cursor to selected. And so now when I add a light by pressing Shift A, navigate to lamp, point light, it'll add it to our scene. But the point light is too bright, so I'm going to change it from 100 to 0 because I don't want it to emit any light. You can, you can have it emit some light if you want, but um, in this particular project, I'm not going to have it emit any light. Uh, for some reason, okay. Just positioning this light. 
go to um, our camera view. Oh, sorry, not there. There's our camera view. I'm going to position it right where the glow text is. Zero to get back to uh, camera view. Okay. Now I'm going to, with the uh, with that light selected, hit the plus sign on this lens flares area and load. And then go click on the preview folder. Click on the thumbnail view. And now you can choose between different lens flares. And the one I'm going to go for is this star PNG. Now remember, we're not in rendered view, so it doesn't show the lens flare. The, the lens flare will only appear when you're in the rendered view mode. Right now, we're in material. Um, so I'll turn that, I'll go to rendered view. And there's our light. I want to change the color of this light to green. And maybe the scale is a little too big, so let's scale it down to 0.3. Okay, that's pretty good. And now I'm going to um, let's see, add another light. I'm going to select my character, Shift S to align my cursor to selected, and now Shift A, lamp point and I'm going to turn down the light setting to zero for this new light I'll position it um, let's move it around a little bit let's go back to material view here and on that light I'm going to add another light or lens flare Go to preview. Let's try spot. Let's see what that looks like in rendered view. Oh, one thing that you need to do is um, Blender by default limits the number of PNGs, even in rendered view, uh, with transparent backgrounds. So you want to crank up the number of um, allowable transparent background images by going into camera settings and then under light paths you want to change the transparency the max from 8 to say go to 50 there we go so that lights up our uh, new spotlight lens flare I'm going to change the intensity and the scale of this lens to something smaller. I want it to be a little bit more subtle. And we will change the color slightly. Okay, that's our second lens flare. These are just little touches, and you know, my philosophy is the more lens flares, the better. Okay, so we'll add one more lens flare and call it a day. Shift. Okay, so now let's go back to our scene. Hit Shift A to add a new another point light, and let's go to our light settings and change the setting for this light to zero, and um, move this light around. Just going to position it on the other side of the screen. Eh, somewhere around here looks good. Okay, now we're going to um, add another light, lens flare, to that light. Go to preview. Let us try. Um, this one, I think. See what that looks like. Okay, we'll move it around a little bit. And 
change the color of this one from blue to something purpley. There we go. And uh, let's see. Just playing it around with it to make it a little prettier. Can change the size of this to maybe two. Let's see how that looks. Not too much, maybe, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I've been playing around with this too much. Okay, so now let's save our file. I forgot to do that. You should actually be saving regularly, so save, give it a name. Let's see, Blender, Scene, Setup, Tutorial. And then save the Blender file. Oh, before I save the Blender file, one thing you want to do is um, file external data and check on automatically pack into Blend. And what that does is it'll save all of these image files that um, I brought into Blender with the file. By default, it won't save those image files, um, you know, like the wall and the, and the character. And now I can save it. Save as. Choose um, Blender. To uh, scene. Setup tutorial. Okay, here we go. Save as Blender file. All right. One more thing I forgot to do is to add a focal point so that we can create some depth of field. That'll give the image an extra layer of um, punch. So, let's see. I want to actually... modify this one of these lens flares a little bit. Change it a little bit more so it's in the corner. The spotlight, right? Let's change the scale back to like 0.5 or something. It gives a little extra oomph. That might be a little too strong. A little too strong. Change that to point. Or point two. Ah. Point two. Okay, we'll leave it at that. All right. So to have your camera focus on a specific object, what we're going to do is um, add a uh, empty to our scene. And an empty is very similar to the null object in After Effects. And if you're not familiar with what a null object is or what an empty is in Blender, essentially it's just a position in space with no object attached. So we're going to um, add our empty to the same location as our character. So select your character, hit Shift S to make sure that your cursor is positioned at the same place and choose uh, move cursor to selected and now we're going to hit shift A again and go to empty and choose plane axis and I'm just going to move that up so that the axis is right centered right on the face because I want the camera to focus on the face and the further you get away from the center of focus the more blurred things become so now we're going to go over and select our camera here in the um, list menu. And then with the camera selected, navigate down, oh, and also rename the empty here. You can also rename it. Double click it, and we'll call it the focal point. I didn't actually go about renaming the objects that I added to the scene, but it's good practice to give them names so that you can find things easier. So now um, have the, select the camera, 
Make sure you have the camera icon selected over here on the right side. And then scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says focus. Click on that cube on the left. And then mouse wheel until you find the empty that you named. And we called it focal point, so click on that. Now the camera's focal point will be on our character. And we're going to change the aperture to something like 0 0.019. I think that's what I used previously. And that'll give us a pretty strong, de a reasonably nice depth of field. Um, Now, now we're done. <laughs> okay, that's it, guys. I promise. So now we're ready to render this. Just hit F12 to render your scene, and uh, that's it. So I'm gonna hit F12 and show you what it looks like. It takes a long time. I'm not gonna sit here to wait for this to finish. Oops, wait. I forgot one more thing. One more thing. Go back to 3D View to cancel the rendering. When Blender renders, it by nature is very grainy. So. If you click on this Render Settings button, scroll down to Denoising and check mark the Denoising box. And what that'll do is um, clean up the noise that normally appears when Blender renders. You'll see the difference when you play around with it. Trust me, you want that on. And so now you're ready to render. I'm going to save my file there. Save again. Save and uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, guys. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in a future video. Take care.